A spike in the number of rabbits is causing trouble for farmers and local authorities near Brisbane. Since European rabbits were introduced to the continent in the late 19th century, Australia has had a problem with them. Did you know that there are an estimated 200 million rabbits in Australia? Surprisingly, despite having so many rabbits, people in Australia do not eat them. Why? We'll explain this in the video. Experts have even stated that introducing European rabbits to Australia was one of the quickest spreading cases of an invasive animal. Despite all efforts to combat this miraculous invasion, they continued to increase year after year, and this has been shocking to even scientists. Join us as we bring you all the details on why this never seen before is happening in Australia. So, how did it all begin? European rabbits, Oryctolagus coniculus, were introduced into the Australian wild to be hunted in 1859. Thomas Austin, a ridge planter in Victoria, Australia, had 13 European wild rabbits shipped to him from all over the world, which he allowed grazing freely on his land. It only took roughly 50 years for these invasive, meaning non-native to the land, rabbits to spread throughout the whole continent from this single garden shelter. Their numbers grew to the point that they ruined crops and land, causing soil erosion. Overgrazing harmed agriculture and vegetation. Not only did rabbits devastate Australian croplands, but they also led to the extinction of native plant and animal species. Even the Commonwealth Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999, the Australian government's principal environmental legislation, cites the numerous consequences of feral rabbits as a threatening process such as soil degradation. These rabbits are exceedingly adaptable, contributing to their spread across Australia. All rabbits require is burrowing soil and short grasses to graze on. Because these conditions are relatively common, they can easily adapt to new habitats, such as Australia's deserts and plains and Europe's meadows. European rabbits are adaptable creatures and are also known for rapidly reproducing large numbers of offspring. They can reproduce at a young age and can reproduce all year. European rabbits, also known as hares, can have up to four litters per year, with an average of two to five kits, baby rabbits, per litter. What efforts have been taken to control this invasion? In 1887, New South Wales state government offered nearly $3 million reward for a potential solution to the problem. In 1906, anxious pastoralists raised another $1.2 million, but the problem remained despite efforts to identify a viable biological control agent. South Australia introduced the Sand Drift Act in 1923 to halt the widespread movement and loss of sand and soil mostly caused by overgrazing and the considerable loss of native flora caused by rabbits. A few years later, Francis Ratcliffe, a scientist with what is now known as the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, or CISRO, Australia's National Science Agency, assigned to report on the problem of erosion and sand drift, wrote what is possibly one of the most perplexing descriptions of the rabbit plague problem along the South Australia-New South Wales border. There were so many rabbits that the earth appeared to shake. In a matter of minutes, their killing pen was full. It was pointless to smack the rabbits on the head since they were sparing them the trouble by suffocating one another. Researchers from the government, biologists, farmers, and others have all sought to eradicate Australia's invading rabbits. Researchers have tried various methods to regulate rabbit populations, including fences, poisons, and infections, with varying degrees of success. Rabbits were a big nuisance for farmers a few decades after arriving in Australia. Initially, farmers and the government constructed fences to prevent rabbits from ruining crops. The government even commissioned the erection of a barrier that ran from north to south throughout Western Australia. Fencing, on the other hand, had little effect on the rabbits. In the instance of Western Australia's fence, it just fenced in rabbits that were already present in the state. Farmers attempted everything at the time, from fencing to excavating rabbits out of their burrows to using any poison they could get their hands on. However, most failed attempts and many farmers just walked away from ruined farms. Until the late 19th century, when Australian scientists discovered the power of viruses in suppressing wild rabbit numbers, Australia was anxious for a remedy. 
A few years before the Sand Drift Act was implemented, Henrique de Beaupere Rohan Arago, a Brazilian scientist, wrote to two Australian scientists and supplied cultures proposing the virus myxomatosis for the suppression of Australia's rabbit epidemics. The virus, discovered in a Uruguayan laboratory in 1896, belongs to the Pox viridae family. The reservoir host was subsequently identified as the Brazilian wild rabbit, Silvilagus brasiliensis, and possibly transmitted by Aedes mosquito. The government moved to biocontrol in the 1950s. They released rabbits afflicted with myxoma, a virus that only affects rabbits into southeastern Australia. The myxoma virus was the first to be deliberately introduced into the wild to exterminate an animal. So unwittingly started one of the great experiments in natural selection, undertaken on a continental scale, Australian scientist Peter Kerr remarked of the release. Myxomatosis, a disease that only affects rabbits, is caused by the myxoma virus. Although the myxoma virus did kill many Australian rabbits, the rabbits soon evolved antibodies to the virus, rendering it useless. If the scientists intended to get rid of these invading rabbits, they'd have to try something else. Another rabbit-specific pathogen discovered in the 1980s was rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus RHDV. This sickness is caused by an RNA, ribonucleic acid virus, spread by flies and can kill rabbits in 48 hours. This virus escaped a quarantine facility and found its way into the wild in 1995. Following its official distribution to control the population in 1996, RHDV reduced rabbit numbers in Australia by up to 90% in very arid areas. Since flies act as the viral vector, the illness does not infect European rabbits that reside in colder and more rainy areas of Australia. RHDV resistance has emerged in these rabbits, as in the myxoma virus. Poison was another prominent way of population control on European rabbits, in addition to viruses. One of the most commonly used poisons to poison rabbits is sodium fluoroacetate, which has a very high fatality rate, more than 90%. Carbon monoxide and phosphine are also used to fumigate burrows and kill any rabbits that may be present. Releasing viruses into the wild is the best and most cost-effective strategy to reduce the population of European rabbits. Scientists are still attempting to control these creatures so they don't harm Australia's environment. Researchers are also investigating more lethal strains of RHDV that may be even more successful in keeping rabbits from dominating the Australian environment. Because European rabbits are an invasive species that cause significant disruption to the local ecology, finding a strategy to regulate and rein in their population is critical. So, why don't people eat rabbits in Australia when they're plentiful? Rabbits were certainly replaced in people's diets in Australia due to myxomatosis, which kills rabbits, and increased wealth. As a result, chickens have taken the place of rabbits. The popularity of rabbits as a food source in Australia was dramatically impacted by an outbreak of myxomatosis, a virus-caused illness that killed many rabbits. This, paired with Australia's growing prosperity, resulted in a shift in food preferences, with chicken increasingly replacing rabbits as the favoured meat. Myxomatosis severely affected rabbit numbers and their availability as a food source. Because the sickness did not harm people, nothing could be done to prevent the virus's spread. This resulted in a significant reduction in the number of rabbits available for food. At the same time, rising levels of prosperity in Australia meant that more people could afford higher quality meats, especially chicken. This shift in consumption choices eventually led to a drop in rabbit intake as a food source. The combination of myxomatosis and rising prosperity significantly influenced rabbit availability as a nutritional item in Australia. While rabbits had been a popular source of food in Australia for centuries, the introduction of myxomatosis and the cultural shift towards more affluent diets meant that they gradually disappeared from the dinner tables of many Australians, despite occasional attempts to reintroduce rabbits to people's plates which have not been successful. Despite all efforts, how are these rabbits living and multiplying in greater numbers? Or is there something we don't understand? It's been stated that these rabbits survive by eating hazardous plants. Once inside, they wreaked havoc on the local wildlife and farmers. 
but one location they were never spotted was up the mountains, just above the snow line. But why is that? Primarily because the grass they eat would be buried in snow and ice, making it difficult for them to access food to live. On the other hand, specialists are beginning to see an increase in the number of these bunnies above New South Wales snow line. So what are they surviving on if they can't get to the grass to maintain their natural diet? According to fecal samples gathered and shipped down for nutritional analysis, the rabbits were consuming white gum leaves, also known as eucalyptus, as the predominant element of their meals. The research has been published in the journal Australian Mammalogy. Because of the compounds in the leaves, these leaves should be harmful to rabbits. Scientists are baffled about how rabbits can eat these leaves while maintaining their active lifestyles. One explanation given by researcher David Lee of the University of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland is that the leaves were just regenerated, which means they're less effective with the compounds that normally make them dangerous than older leaves. To add to the confusion, these leaves only have a little nutrients to provide for energy, which is why sluggish koala bears with low energy lives are known to eat them. They're also notoriously tough to digest, so have these rabbits evolved to be capable of doing so? It's difficult to suppose the rabbits can maintain their regular busy lifestyles given the leaves' poor energy supply. Because of their difficulties digesting them, scientists believe rabbits may have evolved with a gut bacterium capable of doing so. Although nothing is known about the rabbits' habits or health from a mere stool sample, researchers observed that the rabbits continue to reproduce in the location, implying that the apparently toxic plants aren't affecting their health. Whatever the cause, we know that these rabbits have proven to be a riddle, increasing in large numbers and causing resistance to all efforts to control them. What are your thoughts on the rabbits? Let us know what you think in the comments area below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to get more.